Hey guys, uh, recently I was working on some code trying to clamp values to uh, a range. So we might have like a minimum of two and a maximum of 100 that we would like to have. And maybe this is, imagine it's uh, you're building pricing and you have quantity based pricing so people can say, I have this many seats and um, it needs to be a minimum of two and a maximum of 100. So when you're writing code, uh, you'll take the value from the form, which would be like params, seats, something like that. We uh, can imagine that that might come in as zero. Somebody messed with the form or it ended up zero on accident, whatever that might be, could be an invalid value like zero that is not in the minimum or maximum. And you want to make sure that it is not less than the minimum, not ma more than the maximum, which means you have to write code like this and you say value equals minimum if the value is less than the minimum. And then you also have to say value equals the maximum if value is greater than the maximum. And all of that is kind of prone to errors. You have to make sure that you have this exactly correct. Um, it's simple, but it can be a source of issues. You can make a mistake with this pretty easily by having the greater than or less than flipped or whatever that might be. Um, and the conditionals mean that you have to read more to understand at a glance what is going on. So what's cool is that we can do a better version of this and remove the conditionals um, by saying, let's take the minimum and the value you gave us and we will grab the maximum here. So you have to get the maximum value. So it's either zero, it's either the minimum of two or higher or, um, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Um, yes. So if it's three, the larger value here is three and not the minimum, which is two. So we will always get the higher value back. And so this way we can clamp it to, um, that minimum. Same thing applies. If we have a maximum, we can do the other operation. So if our maximum is a hundred and we put three in, we can say we want the minimum value here. So a hundred or less. So the smallest value is three, what the user typed in. If they ever typed in 111, for example, then we get the maximum value instead. So we can get the use min to get the maximum value and clamp it to that. And this will allow you to type in any value lower than 100. So it could be negative numbers and so on. Same applies to minimum and grabbing the max. So you're just making sure it's at least two. It could be 10 million. So there is another case where you might want the value to be within that range of minimum and maximum. Um, and the way you can do that is using clamp. So if we have value equals two, we can say value clamp two, one, and, uh, or actually let's say in this case, the minimum of five and 100. Value.clamp is going to look and do basically the same operations and say, hey, if it's less than the minimum, value we're going to return is the minimum. If it's over the maximum, we'll return the maximum. So here we get five. If value was 111, we can run that same code and we will get 100 back. And basically it's a combination of these two and we get to uh, remove the two conditionals. So even this is an improvement. If you don't have uh, both a minimum and a maximum, then you can use these with min and max, which is handy. But then you can also use clamp uh, in order to clamp to the minimum and maximum. Clamp does not have uh, an option for just the min and max. So uh, this is the way to go for that if you have both. So this is uh, just super handy little Ruby code for you to use whenever you were dealing with something like that, where you have to make sure you know these values we send to an API or something are at least zero or whatever it might be. This is super handy in libraries where you might need to um, enforce that somebody can type in something wrong and we can go correct that and make sure that it's uh, a valid value or something. So this is just something I wanted to show because I found it really useful. I used to do this the hard way um, where you know, you're thinking in English and you're talking out loud when you're writing this code and you're saying, want the value be to be the minimum if the value is less than the minimum. Makes sense, but we can really uh, clean up our code and make it easier to understand at a glance um, 
and see the that there are no branches here because Ruby does the branching and stuff internally. Um, and so that's pretty cool. I really like this approach and have found it really useful. Um, and there were so many places I was able to clean up code. Thought it would be a good thing to share.